okay? Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all. I think we are live today. And first of all, I would like to wish you a happy weekend for all. So for today, Alhamdulillah, in Faculty of Agriculture, we will have a free webinar uh, for today. So I would like to introduce to you uh, our speaker today. He is an uh, Associate Professor, Dr. Uh, Christopher J. Bonsong. And basically, he uh, has earned his PhD in agriculture at the University of Reading, UK, in 2001. He is now a lecturer and an associate professor at the Faculty of Agriculture, University of Putra, Malaysia. And he focuses, uh, you know, he teaches soil science and crop modeling and climate change. Apart from teaching, he was also the project leader for over 20 national and international research grants. He has uh, published over 50 scientific journal articles, eight uh, book chapters, five books, and nearly 80 scientific conference proceedings. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Christopher also, uh, also uh, regularly involved in disseminating gardening advice. He has been uh, invited for talks and has organized gardening workshop for urban, uh, urban gardeners. He was a regular contributor for Dear Plant Doctors, um, a monthly column in the Star newspaper for promoting and helping uh, urban gardeners. And this column has run for 10 months in 2017. He also was a regular contributor for uh, two gardening articles for the local newspaper SJ Echo. So that will be the brief introduction about our speaker today. So without further ado, I would like to uh, pass to Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Christopher to deliver the webinar today. Please, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Susi, for the kind introduction. And thank you, audience, for uh, taking uh, a little time off uh, in, during this free Saturday to attend this webinar. Eh? This is uh, the first, it is a, a part of the series, this is the first of the series. On, web, on community webinar organized by the Department of Land Management under the Faculty of Agriculture, uh, UPM. So let me share my slides. <clears throat> okay, so I, I hope that you can see this uh, 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 slides uh, and especially the, the arrow. Please let me know if you have problems uh, having difficulty in watching this. Okay, so the title today, uh, as I said, this is the JPTH is Jabatan Pengurusan Tanah. It is the uh, Department of Land Management eh? Community uh, Webinar. So this is the first. Eh? Uh, there will be many more about first uh, every one to, uh, sorry, about one once every two or three weeks. Eh? So the title is Wash Rice Water as Liquid Fertilizer, a Myth or Fact? And most importantly, uh, what does science say? Yeah? I think all of us, uh, we all eat rice. Eh? Malaysians eat a lot of rice. And if you are Filipino, you even eat more rice, eh? uh, much more rice. And when we eat rice, before we cook, we always wash it to remove the dirt and excess starch and so on. Eh? And uh, the color is uh, this milky or creamy white. Eh? And we call it uh, liquid. Some people call it liquid white gold. Why uh, white gold? White because, well, it looks white. Why gold? Because uh, it's precious. And liquid, of course, is washed rice water. But it has different names. In Indonesia, uh, they will call it uh, sometimes air cucian beras or air leri uh, beras. And in Philippines, they call it hugas bigas. I think it's Tagalog. Eh? So uh, the idea is this water that is left over after we wash rice very normally is just thrown away. Uh, of course, gardening enthusiasts like yourselves, uh, you will uh, store it and wash it, uh, sorry, and apply it, water it to your plants. Eh? So at the end, um, is it really that beneficial? Eh? Uh, of course, people may say, our neighbors may say it is good, our friends may say, or even our parents and grandparents will say it's, it's beneficial. But what does science say? Eh? So wash rice water, is claimed to be beneficial because when we wash the rice, uh, 
the, the nutrients in the rice, the grain, the solid rice grain, are washed out, or we call it leached, into the water. So that nutrients that has been lost from the rice grains uh, is claimed can be applied as a plant fertilizer, therefore uh, a beneficial plant fertilizer. But surprisingly, yeah, scientific evidence of these claims are lacking. Not lacking because we didn't, uh, not lacking because uh, the science show that it's not good. It's just that it is not done in detail, not studied in detail or in a scientific rigorous manner. So sometimes you may, in the, on the internet, you may see uh, blogs or articles about uh, the benefits of washed rice water, but that is almost always done without a proper uh, rigorous manner, scientific manner. Uh, you cannot just simply add water, wash rice water in the plant and say, oh, it's very healthy compared to my next plant that is not applied just with tap water. Huh? There is a proper way to, anal to set up the experiment, to lay out the experiment, to analyze the data and so on. That is lacking in, uh, uh, even until today. Huh? So the claims of wash rice water as a beneficial plant fertilizer is more based on experience, anecdotal, more stories based on stories, and so on, rather than hard science fact or science evidence that, show, that shows that, you know, we did this research and found that blah, blah, blah is good or not good. Uh, but it's more anecdotes, uh, anecdotals, uh, um, what people say, what's claimed, uh, uh, what our neighbours say, what we think we say. Because we, we have to do the experiment in a certain way to remove the uh, external factors. So we only study those factors that we apply and then we see what is the outcome and we did a, a, a search on papers research papers on wrw is wash rice water there are only 41 41 not not last year 41 up oops uh 41 papers only on wash rice water and out of that 10 percent or four four papers is published in uh in a in a reputable science scientific journal the rest, 90% either in, uh, in, in low-ranking journals or just as undergraduate final year research reports. Now, I don't want to put down these papers that are uh, undergrads. Uh, is, is, they are doing what they are doing. Uh, they are undergrads. Of course, they write a uh, final year research. But this is what I'm trying to show that the study on wash rice water is surprisingly very lacking. And uh, only 41 papers we found. And I said not 41 papers published last year. 41 papers uh, since the beginning of time uh, that I've managed to find. And most of them, 10%, four papers, is only in uh, high-ranking scientific journals. Okay, so, well, you can buy wash rice water from Shopee, eh, but not in Malaysia. Shopee Indonesia, they sell by bottles. It's about 3 ringgit 50 cents. Eh? And uh, very curiously, eh, it is not white, eh? not, not the familiar color we are used to. Yeah, that is creamy white or milky white. It's orange. Sometimes very dark red, dark brown, almost to the color of black. And why orange? Uh, this is because they add uh, brown sugar or molasses or, or red sugar or, or they add um, uh, uh, effective microorganisms. So it's not just washed rice water. They add certain things. Eh? Like this, uh, this young boy, uh, Rafa Azaran Fala, came out in the local newspaper in Indonesia, again, eh, in Kalimantan. He's a young entrepreneur. He, he packaged his own wash rice water and he sells it for one ringgit 50 cents per bottle, about 50, 500 milliliters. Eh. And look at the color. It's uh, not quite consistent. Eh. Maybe, I don't know, maybe this is grade A, grade B. Eh. Uh, this is quite brownish eh. and this is light brown. Again, he has been added with sugar, with claims that the sugar will uh, give fuel or food to the microbes in the wash rice water. Again, this is another UST student. This one is a, a boy, I think, I'm not sure how old is he, maybe 12 years old. Uh, and uh, this one by UST students, uh, Dipono, Dipo Nigoro, UST in Jawa. They also package it, uh, POC, uh, Pupuk Organic Chai, uh, Liquid uh, Organic Fertilizer. And the color again is not creamy white added. Eh? So basically, you can you can do it yourself. Eh? You can just wash your uh, rice, uh, add some molasses or add some sugar and or effective microorganisms, and then you, you package it in a fancy bottle, 
print a fancy label and then you can sell it for I don't know, uh, 150 to 350 cents uh, and sell it at Shopee. Right? Uh, but again, it's, it's nothing complicated, nothing high technology or high skill. Uh, the, there's even uh, instruction like this for every one liter of wash rice water, like this uh, almost uh, white, uh, white color. And then you add 100 grams of brown sugar and then about one to two teaspoon or one cap of uh, effective microorganisms. The, the reason they add all this is to encourage the growth of uh, beneficial microbes in the wash rice water. And this is the fuel, the food for the microbes. So that's why they add the sugar. So you just add, mix it, very easy. Uh, what is probably unusual is uh, this uh, plastic jerry bottle eh? where you, you can, again, you don't have to use this, but it's easy, but you need to do a bit of customization you need to uh, make a hole, attach it to a tube, put the tube, uh, submerge the tube into a, a mineral bottle with uh, water. Why they do this is to leave it for fermentation. So they ferment by itself inside this bottle for one week. Then they say you can sell it or you can put it in your plant. Again, where's the evidence that this actually works? Again, it's all based on any dopes, eh? any, uh, where, where it's just claimed that it's beneficial claim to be better but how much better or is it better simply because uh, of the uh, they pay more attention to the plant uh, uh, all right and again uh, this is just one source uh, and you you go to youtube you are you are blessed with or or rather cursed <laughs> or maybe perhaps cursed uh, because you have so much information about diy uh, how you can do your own um, uh, wash rice water formula and it's almost always the same always adding uh, sugar and adding wash rice water, uh, sorry, and adding uh, effective microorganisms. There are some, sometimes they do a bit of uh, customization again, eh, like this one, they add kulit bawang merah eh, into, their, uh, into their mixture. All right, so you, you use the Malay word, ai leri uh, or ai cucian beras. You get more hits than using the English uh, wash rice water. So, okay, at the end of the day, why bother? Why study wash rice water? Eh? Uh, if we know what we know, so how, how meaningful will be the results or the knowledge be? If tomorrow we find that wash rice water is well, wow, very good. So why bother? Eh? Why, why learn? Well, Malaysians eat, consume about 3 million tons of rice per year. And this number of 3 million tons does not include the consumption of rice in other forms like making rice flour, uh, rice noodles, and even the inclusion of rice into non-food products like cosmetics, animal feed, and any uh, and other byproducts. So this 3 million tons is just what we cook in a rice cooker and then we eat every day. But it does not include rice in the food industry, used by the food industry. And according to a recent survey, almost all, uh, 97 Malaysians eat rice twice a day. If you're Filipino, it's probably three times a day. Eh? So Asians, basically, uh, we eat a lot of rice. Eh? So even using just a conservative estimate, eh, this 3 million tons of rice, if we wash it with the usual way, it can produce about 3 to 18 billion liters of washed rice water per year in Malaysia. And these 3 to 18 billion liters of uh, wash, uh, washed rice water is simply just thrown away, thrown, poured down into our sink, and into the environment. Now, it can be hard to, to picture how much is 3 to 18 billion. So this work out to be about uh, 0 0.4 to 2% of Malaysia's mean annual rainfall. Well, uh, not, not, not to say a lot. Eh? So, but nevertheless, even though it's only 0.4 to 2, less than 2% of Malaysia's mean annual rainfall, um, wash rice water should still be reused or recycled as part of water governance. So that wastewater, rather than just being discarded into the environment unused, it is instead reused, recycled, or treated. I like the comment by one of the uh, uh, Facebook user who said that uh, you know we, when we wash rice, this water that is produced uh, is better to use it rather than just throw it away. And uh, you know it's always produced. It's not like we intentionally produce this uh, wash rice water. As long as we eat rice and we wash the rice before cooking, this is the way
waste water and it's better to use it to do something about it rather than just throwing it away. So uh, uh, that is a good rationale why we study wash rice water. Eh? And secondly, uh, global freshwater demand is expected to increase by 55% by the middle of this century due to climate change and increasing world population. Now, Earth is surrounded by 70% of water, but not all, only less than 1% of that 70% of water is fresh water, directly usable. So we, we, Earth may be covered by a lot of water, but a lot of it is, cannot be used directly eh, because of uh, high salt content. What can be used is the fresh water, and the world does not have a lot. As I said, less than 1% of fresh or water is fresh water. Eh? And agriculture is the biggest consumer of water in the world. Agriculture uses 70% of the world fresh water. So imagine eh, the world's fresh water, 70% of it goes to agriculture. Then the rest, 30%, goes to other sectors. And uh, just to give you an idea how much is 70%, uh, agriculture uses 280 million liters of water per second for growing crops. This doesn't include for animals. Eh? So this is 280 million liters per second, not per year, per second. So one second, 280, two seconds, uh, 516 and so on and so forth. And the FAO of the United Nations says that feed more than half of our global fresh water is simply just discarded. We use a lot of fresh water, but we also waste a lot of fresh water. And municipal water, urban water, is 11% of that global fresh water withdrawal. And again, a lot is wasted. 8% is just discarded and only 3% is used. So reusing wash rice, wash rice water is a part of water governance. It's not the water governance. It's only part of the uh, program or targets or, or achievement for better water governance. And if wash rice water is shown to be a good fertilizer, it can potentially reduce the fertilizer usage, particularly in the uh, urban areas. So one part, water governance, and the second part can potentially reduce uh, fertilizer usage if it's shown to be good. Even if it's not as good as normal fertilizer, it, it can reduce. Eh? So Regardless, uh, Indonesia has a lot of interest in wash rice water. Uh, it's part of the, sometimes even the local community, eh, like uh, in Pulau Julis, uh, in Indonesia, Bogor. They, this is a, a com community initiative. Eh? Just, just by themselves, they decided to collect the waste, uh, the wash rice water from everybody in the village, collect it, and then uh, use it for watering and fertilizing the village crop. And this is not just them only, but in another part in Indonesia, Jawa, uh, Lambang Kuning, uh, as part of the local uh, government policy, they collect wash rice water as part of the program for women emancipation uh, in, for part of the national development. So uh, the Indonesians are already doing it in some villages, uh, as you can see here. So the questions that will be answered in today's uh, web community webinar are as follows. Uh, we want to know how much nutrients are there actually in wash rice water. We know nutrients are leached, definitely. Yeah? Uh, but how much? Is it a lot? Uh, is it very little to the point of being negligible? Uh, that is what we want to answer. Second, how does uh, water volume and rice washing intensity affect the nutrient concentration in wash rice water? In other words, if we use a lot of water or if we wash very aggressively, does it affect the nutrient content? We think it will, but how much? Is it a lot? Is it a little or very a lot of difference? Eh? That means if I use a lot of water, does it mean I dilute the nutrients? Or if I wash very aggressively, does it cause more nutrients to be leached out? Uh, we think it might eh? because uh, uh, intuitively, we think that if we wash it very aggressively, more nutrients will come out. And third, how does fermentation? Now, this is a very important question because a lot of gardening enthusiasts, they don't just apply wash rice water as it is. Some of them do ferment it for sometimes one week, even 14 days. Eh? Uh, does it affect nutrient content? Does it increase? No, no change or less because the microbes are eating the nutrients. Eh? Uh, and of course, the microbes. The wash rice water is not just water and nutrients, but can it encourage 
uh, microbial bacteria growth in the wash rice water? And fourth, is there any beneficial bacteria in the wash rice water? Or we don't want pathogens, eh? but uh, pathogen meaning they cause disease uh, for the plants or worse for humans. Eh? And fifth, how much nutrients? This is one of the uh, questions that is not asked often enough. Eh? Uh, how much nutrients in wash rice water are lost from soil? Because remember, wash rice water. Water is liquid. Eh? So when we apply wash rice water, if we pour the whole pot of wash rice water into the soil, how much is retained in the soil? Or how much is just simply wasted? All right? We claim that we want to save wash rice water, we want to reuse, but if we just pour the whole pot of wash rice water into our little pot, a lot of it is also wasted. So in another way, instead of throwing down the wash rice water in our kitchen sink, we, we, we throw away our wash rice water through our pot, <laughs> our, our potted plants, yeah? because the plants all cannot absorb and the soil cannot keep all the wash rice water. So this is one important question we need to answer. Number six, ultimately, is wash rice, is wash rice water a good fertilizer in the short and long term? Most studies are done in the short term, just one planting cycle, one, five weeks, four weeks, but rarely uh, done in the long term over several planting cycles. Uh, perhaps the first time we plant wash rice water is uh, not remarkable, but as the time goes on, as we continue planting, replanting, uh, does the effect increase over time or worse, decrease over time? And ultimately, number seven, is it as good as your conventional NPK fertilizer? Number seven is important because if wash rice water is shown to be as good as NPK fertilizer, it means that it can replace NPK fertilizer. But even if it's not as good, let's say just half as good, it's still better than then nothing because it shows that it can at least reduce the usage of or, uh, or at least complement the NPK fertilizer. Okay, this is the results that I obtained. There are a lot of numbers here. Uh, this is rice grain, the solid grain. Eh? This is the amount of nutrients and the properties in the rice grain. These are the properties of the liquid uh, wash rice water. That means when we wash the rice, uh, this, this is the amount of nutrients produced. And we also, as a, as a benchmark or baseline, we have the tap water. Remember, tap water is not just H2O. Eh? It contains other nutrients. But uh, as you can, if you, you don't have to go through one by one, but you can see, eh? if you compare roughly, eh, quickly, eh? Uh, wash rice water definitely has more nutrients than tap water. Tap water, because it's treated tap water, according to the national water standards, it must have low. Eh? It, it should have low, it cannot be high. But the pH of tap water is about, new, about excuse me, eh, about neutral 6.5. Eh? This is as it, as it should. Uh, tap water, uh, sorry, wash rice water because it's based on tap water uh, is also has a similar uh, pH. Eh? EC, roughly speaking, is just the indication. Uh, EC stands for electrical conductivity. It, it indicates the uh, roughly, yeah, just roughly speaking, it indicates the amount of nutrients in the in the in the wash rice water. So uh, EC is high because it contains more nutrients than tap water, and uh, and so on. Eh? Uh, if you cannot remember your chemistry in your school, not to worry. All these all these symbols, these are the elements. Eh? Uh, the uh, total N that is the nitrogen. And this NH4 is the ammonium, NO3 minus is the nitrate. These are the available nitrogen. These are the forms of nitrogen that can be taken up by the plant. So nitrogen is a very important element. Uh, P, uh, phosphorus, K is potassium, uh, calcium, Ca, magnesium, Mg. These are the major nutrients as well as S, sulfur. The last three, copper, zinc, boron, Cu is copper, zinc is Zn, B is boron. These are micronutrients. We call it micronutrients because they are needed in smaller quantities. But this does not mean they are, they are, not, they are not important. Huh? They are very important, but just needed in smaller quantities. And uh, you can see their uh, uh, wash rice water contains more nutrients. But what we want to know, okay, what I want to highlight is the moisture. Huh? Uh, wash rice water is more than 99% made up of uh, water liquid water, 
right? So that's why we call it water, wash rice water. This is very important. It's not solid. It's not half solid or 100% solid. It is 99%. Uh, so it acts like a liquid fertilizer. So there is a high risk of uh, leaching losses. Eh? Uh, that means if we apply, over apply, we risk losing a lot of that. If the soil cannot keep it, if the plants cannot keep the water and keep the nutrients, uh, that, that will be lost eh? because it's water. And the carbon content is about 3-4%. So compared with wash rice water with uh, like palm oil mill effluent, uh, it, it actually wash rice water has lower nitrogen and lower potassium compared to POMI, palm oil mill effluents, but higher C and higher C and higher P. Yeah? So wash rice water, you can think it's comparable with POMI, but it does have lower N and K, but higher uh, P and carbon, yeah? surprisingly higher carbon. But this is what we probably want to know is how much nutrients are lost. When we wash, when we wash the rice, how much nutrients is actually lost? Eh? Uh, most of it lost in the form of sulfur, the least nitrogen. Uh, sulfur is by far the most, eh? but the others is about uh, 4, 15, 10, 9 and so on. On average, 9%, uh, median 8%. So uh, when we wash rice, Sorry, eh? when we wash rice, uh, about 9% of nutrients is lost from the rice grain. Eh? But it varies according to nutrients. Uh, if it's sulfur, it's, you can lose about a third of it, about 33-35%. Eh? But the others is about oh, 9%. Eh? And the next one I like to present is the effect of fermentation. Uh, we uh, or wash rice water. Eh? Uh, for zero days. Zero days means it's fresh. Eh? We, we freshly prepare the wash rice water. And then another one, we leave it for three days. Then the other one, we leave it for six days and nine days. So we have zero to nine. Zero is the fresh, three, six, nine. So if we ferment it for this long, does the nutrient content go up or go down? So another factor we wanted to study was the water volume. One to one, that means we use equal amount of water to wash rice. That means if we wash one liter of rice, we use one liter of water. Three to one, we use three times more water than rice. We, we, that means we use three liters of water to wash one liter of rice. And then the most is the six liters of water to wash one liter of rice. Again, well, how does it affect? If we use more water, does it increase the nutrients or decrease or no difference? And the next, we use the washing intensity. We go for 50 rounds per minute, 80 rounds per minute, 100 rounds per minute for uh, 90 seconds or one and a half minute. Now we wash using this uh, food mixer. Now it's a bit strange. Eh? Uh, of course, we don't wash rice using this <laughs> uh, uh, sort of mixer. But we, we use this because we wanted to remove the uh, variation caused by the operator. Right? Because some people wash rice more aggressively. Some people wash rice in this way and that manner. So they wash rice differently. They wash rice at different uh, intensity. So we wanted to remove that factor. We wanted a constant uh, a way of washing rice. So we, that's why we use a machine that can produce this constant uh, rate of washing intensity. Yeah? So at the end, we wanted to know these three factors on the nutrient content. And these are the results. Now, don't be, don't be uh, scared uh, that there is a very clear trend. Eh? So let me just go slowly. The first, the leftmost column is the 50 rounds per minute, right? The leftmost column. The 80, the middle column is the 80 rounds per minute. And 100 is the rightmost column, 100 rounds per minute. Now, every row is one element or one property. Now, this is the electrical conductivity, the top row followed by ammonium. This is the available nitrogen that is important. The third is the nitrate and P, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc. And the x-axis is the fermentation. Zero day means fresh. Three days means three days of fermentation. Six means six days and nine days. Eh? Now, and then uh, the blue is the one-to-one -one water ratio. That means we use same amount of water with same rice. Uh, three, that means we use three times more water. Six means we use six times the triangle. Eh? Now, you, if you look at every graph, eh, 
generally, yeah, the longer we ferment, the graph goes up, the, all the line goes up. Yeah? See, all goes up, generally. Some of it a bit stable, but generally, you, if you look from left to right, yeah, whichever row you're looking at, whichever elements you're looking at, yeah, the longer you leave it to, for fermentation, the nutrient content increases for ammonium, for nitrates, for phosphorus, for potassium, for calcium, for magnesium, and for zinc. So all these nutrients, the, 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 the longer you leave it to ferment, zero, three, six, nine days, you get higher nutrient concentration. Now, EC, same thing. That's why it's an indication of basically the nutrients in the, in the wash rice water. You leave it longer, the EC reading also goes up, showing, showing that the nutrient concentration goes up. That is fermentation effect. Next, we go to water ratio. Eh? Essentially, you see the triangle, eh? the red triangle are at the topmost. Ignore the first one first, I will later discuss. If you look at the second row, third row, fourth row, uh, then the next column and the first, second, third, essentially they show the same thing, that uh, the, the higher water ratio, the, if you wash using more water, you will get higher nutrients. If you use less water, like one-to-one, -one, the blue, eh? you notice the blue is generally in the bottom, not for all, eh? but generally uh, you get lower nutrients. So you use more water to wash your rice, you leave it to ferment for longer, you will tend to get higher nutrient concentration. Eh? Uh, for EC, it's the other way around. Uh, the one-to-one, -one, the blue dots, and the red triangle, the six-to-one, is the reverse. This is because of dilution, eh? because EC measures the concentration. So if you use more water, uh, obviously the concentration will be lower because you add more water. So it makes sense. But for other nutrients, uh, the longer you ferment, the use more water, you will get more nutrients. However, there are some that is the other way. So this is more like the part one and part two of the results. Eh? For pH, uh, the the graph goes down. This makes sense. Uh, as you ferment uh, wash rice water, it will grow increasingly acid. Remember, tap water is about 6.5. So at, when it's fresh, zero days, you get about 6.5. But over time, very rapidly, about nine days, it will decline to about four. And there's no difference in one to one, three to one, or six to one. Eh? But the stronger effect is when this again because of formation of organic acids in the in the wash rice water as you leave it to ferment. Now, carbon and nitrogen, C and nitrogen, they have a pattern where it goes up to three days, and then after that, it goes down. Eh? And for copper, uh, interestingly, eh, the trend is quite clear that it goes down over time. Now, copper is very interesting. Eh? Oh, sorry, eh, before I go that, uh, C and N is uh, later, I'll show how important they are. They will affect the amount of bacteria that you find in the wash rice water. Here, it's not a clear trend of it going up and then going down uh, or going down. It's more like going up, peaking at three days. Then after three days, it will decline. I will later show that this, it, it tallies with the microbial population. Right? But I want to look at the copper, CU. CU is actually copper is poison for the bacteria. That's why uh, uh, some hospitals, they have copper surfaces. Our face mask, they say infused with copper oxide because copper is a natural uh, antibacteria or antivirus uh, a lot of even even snails don't like copper eh? and uh, it saves cost you don't have to wipe down using alcohol if the if the tabletop is made of copper it's a natural uh, antibacteria antimicrobes eh? but at small amounts bacteria actually needs copper and wash rice water contains low amounts of copper to serve as food for the bacteria. This, this is why it declines over time because the bacteria are, this is my hypothesis, I cannot prove it, eh? but uh, this is what I read from the latest research that at low amounts, copper is a food, not a poison. Only if it's high amounts, then it's poison. But at low amounts, copper is actually used by microbes and wash rice water contains uh, low enough, the copper to be used by the microbes. This is why the copper content declines over time because it's, I believe, uh, is taken up, eaten by the bacteria in the wash rice water. So to summarize, 
Wash rice water chemical properties mainly affected by fermentation and the water amount you use. Washing intensity, whether you wash at 50 rounds per minute, 80, or you very aggressively at 100, it has little to no effect on, uh, on the nutrient content. So what is more important is the fermentation and how much water you use. And you view ferment for longer is essentially everything increases. The, all basically all nutrients except for carbon, nitrogen, which peaks at three days, then declines. Copper declines since day zero. And pH, because of formation of organic acids, they will decline over time. And if you use more water to wash your rice, again, it leads to higher nutrient concentration of these elements. Uh, these are more water soluble. So uh, because they are more soluble, they will be easily, more easily leached into the water. But the ones that are fixed, like uh, P, they are fixed as phytate, eh? uh, P, magnesium and zinc, they are less soluble. So using more water will only cause dilution. So lower P, lower magnesium, lower zinc. But essentially, all other nutrients, you use more water, more nutrients will leach. But just bear in mind, you will get lower P and magnesium. P is a very essential nutrient, eh? same like magnesium. But boron, we find that it was not affected by any of the treatments. Eh? Perhaps because rice has little boron. Uh, now, this is also important. This is the nutrient content, eh? just looking at the nutrient content. Now we look at the bacteria population. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is 50 rounds per minute. This is 80 rounds per minute. And this is 100, more aggressive as you, as you go up. Eh? And this is the bacterial population. Uh, there is little difference between 80 and 100. That means if you wash your rice at 80 rounds per minute or 100 rounds per minute, it will not lead to much difference between the bacteria. But it will cause, it will have greater population than 50. So if you wash your rice at lower intensity, 50 rounds per minute, this is the amount of bacteria you get, much lower than 80 and 100. So population increases rapidly at the first three days. When it's fresh, there's basically no difference between the bacteria population, eh? whether it's 50, 80. Eh? But when you, after three days, just in the first three days, you get a very rapid uh, increase in population. Then after that, it declines over time. So this is why copper, like just now, so not copper, carbon, carbon and nitrogen, it goes up, <clears throat> up to three days and then declines because it is taken up by the bacteria. So this means that the wash rice water can only support about three days of bacteria growth. For the first three days, you get an explosion of bacteria. But after three days, they will start to decline. So you leave it for six, you leave it for nine, even lower. And perhaps if we continue to 12, you get even lower. So the wash rice water you have, do not ferment it for longer than three to, three to six days. Because after, after that six days, or perhaps uh, be, be, before that, the population will rapidly, uh, not rapidly, like you'll start to decline over time. Right? So the more water you use, the lower the, uh, uh, the, lower the population population. Eh? So you use less water, one to one, you will have higher population growth than three to one and higher than six to one. So the more, in, in summary, you wash aggressively, you will get higher bacteria. And if you use less water, you will get higher bacteria growth. Now, why is this so? Eh? You have to look at the carbon nitrogen ratio. So uh, the blue, blue, blue bar here is the 50 rounds per minute. The orange is the 80 rounds per minute. And the gray is the 100. So this first section is the one-to-one -one water ratio. You use less water. Three to one, you use three times more water. Six to one uh, means you use a lot of water, six times more water. And now uh, for, for bacterial growth, you need, just like composting, eh? you need a CN ratio between 20 and 30, like indicated by this red line. Now, this is the sort of in the general threshold, the general optimal level of CN ratio, carbon to nitrogen. And wash rice water contains a more, higher CN ratio than the optimum. Eh? Now, this is why 
if you use 6 to 1, if you look at this, eh, look at how high the carbon nitrogen ratio is, more than 100, compared to 1 to 1, uh, 40, 30, and about 21. This is why the 6 to 1, when you use a lot of water, the bacteria doesn't like it because the CN ratio is too high for them to grow. So they like the 1 to 1 because it is closer to the optimum. Uh, that is about 20 to 30. And if you look at the 50 round per minute, uh, higher, the, basically the blue bar is taller than the grey bar. This one is about the same, uh, higher the other way. But if you look at the extreme, 6 to 1, uh, the blue bar is much higher than the grey bar. This shows that the blue bar, the 1 to 1, you, you will have, is the, the ratio is too high. It, that's why bacteria loves if you use less water and if you wash it very aggressively at 100. Because at 100, at 1 to 1, you will get a good CN ratio. And the bacteria loves it at 1 to 1 because the ratio is about 22. Uh, if you use 3 to 1, it's a little too high. And 6 to 1, even worse, way higher. So bacteria doesn't like uh, you wash it at 6 to 1 because what, regardless what is the washing speed, you will get your water ratio, uh, CN ratio too high. Eh? Now, this explains why you, if you wash your rice aggressively, eh, like 100 rounds per minute, uh, uh, and you use less water, the CN ratio is more towards the optimum 20 to 30. And this is why explains the result, why uh, you get more bacteria at 100 rounds per minute. And if you less, use less water, like the white bar here, you get more bacteria. Okay, next. We want to identify what kind of bacteria. We only measure the population, just how many of them. But we want to know who are they in the bacteria. So this is just a picture showing uh, 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 the, 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 the so lot, what do you call it, the, uh, the media growth, uh, bacteria media. Uh, this is zero days, three days, nine, six days, and nine days. Eh? So in order to determine whether the bacteria can help us supply nitrogen, fertilizer or nutrients, we grow them. Uh, is, if they turn blue, increasingly blue, it shows that they have a very strong uh, fixation of nitrogen. That means they can supply nitrogen much easier. And you, you notice that the three day, the color blue is darker. Nine days is still blue, but light blue. Uh, green is the natural color. That means green, nothing. Eh? P solubilization means they supply P. K, they supply K. Uh, potassium and it's not measured by color but the size of the halo as you can see these little two dots here eh? so the bigger the dot the bigger the halo means it has a stronger uh, fixation stronger solubilization stronger uh, you can call it a supplier of fertilizer eh? of p and k so you notice that the circle the halo for the three days is much bigger than uh, the nine day nine day they sort of disappear eh? same thing with potassium the halo is very clear, big, and uh, during the third day, but the sixth day is become smaller, and the nine days is almost transparent. Eh? So the three days, this is why the wash rice water, the optimum is about three, four days. Eh? Six days is already past the peak. So these are the identity of the, of the bacteria that we have. Zero days, we only found Enterobacter species. And the third day is the highest, it's not just the highest population count, but the highest diversity. We found Bacillus, Enterobacter, Clipsilla, and Pantoa. And on the sixth day, we found these bacteria. Uh, the diversity has decreased, and the nine days decreased. So the, this plus means they can fix nitrogen, they can solubilize P. So some, some, some bacteria like Clipsella, they can do all three. They can help to supply nitrogen. They can help to supply phosphorus. They can help to supply potassium. Pantoa, same thing. Strep, uh, stenostrophonas, also same thing. Some only can do P. Some can do all three. Some can do two. But at the end, basically, all of these are beneficial. Uh, Microbes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Microbes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, apologize, apologies for that. <laughs> well, today is going to be a long webinar. Eh? <laughs> a lot of interruption. Eh? Okay, so um, right. So this is the uh, the how we identify the beneficial bacteria eh? uh, by the color. Uh, blue is darker the blue. That means they can uh, help to supply nitrogen. And the halo, not color, but the size of the halo. The bigger the halo, uh, it shows that they can uh, help to supply phosphorus and potassium. You can see that the blue is the darkest during the third day. And the size of the halo is the biggest during the third day. After that, the blue becomes lighter and the halo becomes smaller, almost disappearing. Eh? That's why when we ferment the rice, uh, the best, the period is three to four days. Eh? And this is the identity of the bacteria in the wash rice water. Uh, even at fresh water, you get enterobacter. But at the third day onwards, you get the not only the highest population, but the most beneficial, uh, the most diverse bacteria. You get Bacillus, Enterobacter, Kixella, and Pentoa. At six days, you get a lower diversity, and at the nine days, uh, you get some similar like Enterobacter, but Clipsella, which which is which which was present during the third day, is lost at the sixth and ninth day. And this one indicates their ability to supply nitrogen, ability to supply P, and the ability to supply K. So some bacteria like Clipsella, they can supply all three. Pentoa, same thing, they can do all three. Some can only do two. They can supply N and they can supply P. And some can only supply P and K. Right, but they all do something. It's not, not nothing is all uh, dash dash dash. Eh? So, so this is the uh, identity of the bacteria. Eh? But I need to stress something. Eh? That uh, Clipsella steno, steno, uh, stenotrophonas and Pentoa, they are they are beneficial for plants, but for humans at high amounts, they can cause uh, pneumonia. They can cause uh, uh, respiratory, uh, urinary, uh, and even meningitis. And Pentoa, they are beneficial, but at times they can cause diseases in certain crops. But all this, I like to stress, just because they are present, it does not mean they are a health hazard. Because these are very common, uh, very common bacteria found in the environment, in the soil. Don't be surprised, you can find them even in your kitchen and toilet. Eh? Again, just because they are there does not mean uh, wash rice water is harmful or a health hazard. It just means they are there, but at low amounts, they are, pro uh, uh, they are probably not uh, dangerous. Eh? Like Clipsella is a good example. Clipsella, if you look at the previous slide, they are only found in the third day. After that, the sixth and ninth day, they are no longer present. Eh? Okay, so just keep that in mind. This is a uh, put it in mind that uh, Clipsella, Stenotrophonas, steno, and Pentoa, they are they can cause uh, human disease, but the risk is very low. Yeah, but uh, you just need to keep this in mind. And besides N, P, and K, uh, the bacteria can also supply a very important hormone. Eh? We call it IAA or indole acetic acid. Again, the highest is at three days. After that. It declines at six and then nine days. Eh? So this indoacetic acid is a plant hormone. In school, you probably learned it as auxin, and uh, very important for plant and root growth, particularly for the roots elongation and root hair. So wash rice water uh, can should be beneficial to promote root growth, eh? particularly the roots. So it's not just NPK but auxin as well. Now the next one we wanted to learn. How much nutrients is lost from the, the leachate? Eh? That means we set up an experiment. There's a tube. We put it soil, different kinds of soil, about 30 centimeter deep. And then we pour wash rice water and we see how much came out and what came out. How much water came out and how much nutrients was lost. Preferably, ideally, what we put into the soil stays into the soil. But we know that it's not true. Eh? Some will come out. Eh? And uh, the clay soil contains a lot of clay. The silt loam soil contains a lot of the silt. And the sandy loam contains a lot of the clay. So as expected, 
a lot of sand, sorry, sand, eh? a lot of sand, you have a lot of losses from, uh, from what, you, what you put. Uh, the least is the silt. But, uh, and the amount of water, the clay is near saturation. So the clay soil, this, this shows you the importance of not overwatering. Eh? We have, because we, only, we put the flat rate across all different soils, so the amount of water and the clay is basically over, over eight weeks is saturated. It's too much water. Eh? Sandy clay is all right. We want it to be about the green line fuel capacity. Eh? This is a good target to achieve. We don't want it to be lower than the red line because the red line means uh, a lot of, uh, that means the soil is too dry. We want it to be near the green line. And you can see basically they are overwatered because there are no plants, it's just soil. Eh? A sandy clay is about all right, but they lose a lot of water. But what is important is the next slide. Eh? Um, <clears throat> for this nitro, um, uh, nitrate, ammonium, PK, calcium, magnesium, send, uh, a lot of nutrients from the washed rice water is lost from uh, P, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. You can see eh, 100%. That means they lose more than what we add. We don't want it, ideally, we want it 0%. That means nothing is lost. What we put into the soil stays in the soil. That's zero percent. Uh, but most of it is quite low, about twenty-five, uh, lower than fifty. But except for these three nutrients, this phosphorus, potassium, and for magnesium, they are above hundred percent. Especially for sandy clay loam. That means for sandy clay loam, if your soil contains a lot of sand, you risk losing a lot of P, K, and magnesium. Same thing with other soils, but not above 100. So for sandy clay loam soils, you are going to lose more uh, than what you add, especially for nutrients P, K, and magnesium. And these are three essential nutrients for our plants. Sir. So uh, this is just to show you that wash rice water, you have to manage it. You shouldn't just pour the whole pot of wash rice water into your soil. That is as good as basically pouring down the kitchen uh, kitchen uh, kitchen sink yeah, because these are you're going to lose more than what you have added into your pot yeah, or your field or PK and magnesium particularly if your soil contains a lot of sand if you are clay you're all right but clay the problem with clay is like this slide uh, you tend to over water so this is again a problem not a nutrient problem but a watering problem you have too much water in the soil yeah, containing a lot of soil a lot of clay Okay, so this slide shows that uh, sandy clay loam soil already contains low amount of nutrients. So if you lose these nutrients, it's going to cause uh, even water uh, nutrient deficit. Eh? So you don't want to lose what little that you have. You want to keep them. They already have low nutrient content compared with silt loam and clay. You don't want them to lose even more nutrients. Okay, the lastly is the crop growth experiment. Uh, we use a vegetable test crop, a very common vegetable, choy sum, Brassica chinensis, sometimes called Brassica rapa. And they are grown on three types of soil. The same soil just now I discussed, clay, high in clay, silt loam, high in silt, and sandy clay loam, very high in sand. And we use three planting cycles. That means we use the same soil over three planting, three times we plant. We plant, we harvest, we plant again, we harvest, and then we plant for the third time and harvest. And these are the treatments. We use control, only tap water, no fertilizer, just plain tap water. RW0, this is unfermented or fresh water, fresh washed rice water. RW3, that means rice water, three days fermentation, and your normal NPK fertilizer at the standard rate of 68, 10, 96. And we water them uh, at a constant rate of daily five millimeters. And then we, and this is the experiment under the rain shelter. And as you, why we did it under the rain shelter, not over the field, under the field, or in the field, because uh, we wanted to control the amount of water received by every crop. And we also want to do the, the leaching. You can see eh, uh, there is the, there's a plastic bag at the bottom. Eh, is to collect the leachate coming out from the, from the different trays. Eh. This experiment, the data is still being, uh, we are still analyzing, but I'm presenting what, uh, what we have, right? So these are just some pictures showing of the trial. They are all randomly located. It's not one row of clay, one row of sand. There must be some randomization. And some shows good growth, some shows not so good, and so on. Eh? And these are some pictures 
Again, don't rely on pictures. They can be deceiving. Sometimes they look small, but they are heavy. Yeah? So, so uh, it's, it's just, a, just, to, just a picture. Uh, this Again, uh, just to remind you, RW0 is unfermented, fresh. RW3 is fermentation after three days. NPK is your usual NPK fertilizer. CON is just tap water, nothing but tap water. And this is for Kresol. Silk loam, you can see there are really some uh, difference. Eh? Uh, right? Please keep note how, how similar RW3 and NPK look like. Eh? Uh, right? So this is, they look quite similar. Just visually, eh? just to look visually. Uh, visually, uh, again, these two look alike. The three-day fermentation and normal fertilizer. The fresh doesn't look as good. Eh? And again, and this one, uh, this is for the sandy clay loam soil. Eh? Now, we found that the sandy clay loam soil, uh, like the leaching experiment, the leaching tube, it, it had no effect. It means the sandy loam soil probably because of too much leaching losses. Eh? Now, again, this graph looks complicated. I will slowly go through by one by one. The leftmost is the clay soil. Middle is the silt loam. The rightmost is the sandy clay loam. And the first row is the leaf area. Preferably, we want big leaves. Eh? And the second row is the leaf weight, leaf dry weight. Again, we don't only want big leaves, we want heavy leaves. Eh? When we go to the market, we go for big leaves and heavy leaves. Eh? And this is the total weight, including the leaves and everything above ground, not including the roots. Eh? So, and, uh, and, and you, if you look, the CON, the red, the red dot is always below. That means control, no surprise, is the worst. That means because they don't receive anything, they don't receive any nutrients, we don't expect it to perform as well as, as the other treatments. Uh, so the, all the red dots are all in the bottom. Eh? And But you look at the, pay attention to the blue and the purple dot. The, the blue dot is the NPK, the purple dot is the RW3, fermentation after three days. All, for all soils, except for sandy clay loam, for clay and silt loam, the blue dot and the purple dot are no different, basically no different from each other. Essentially, generally, yeah, there are some differences here, but generally they are same. That means, uh, and the third cycle, this is the first cycle, second cycle, the third cycle. The third cycle is very different from the first and second cycle. This shows that the third cycle, you get start to see the strong uh, effect of treatments. Even the control has a stronger third cycle then, but highest is the NPK. So if we had just stopped our experiment at the first cycle, we may report less than impressive results. So we may just say, well, it's okay. But if we continue to the, until the third cycle, we start to see big differences between uh, the NPK and the uh, wash rice water and even in the control. Uh, so the third cycle, you start to see uh, generally the wash rice water, three days of fermentation is just as good as your NPK fertilizer and all better than control. And the sandy clay soil is the worst. Sandy clay loam soil with the high sand content, very little difference between treatment, uh, probably because of the high nutrient losses as showed previously. So if your soil is a, has very, a lot of sand, you might report less than impressive result for wash rice water. You may say that, well, it's a myth that wash rice water is beneficial because I planted in my garden, which has a lot of sand, and I got not so good results. Just as good as pouring tap water or with my NPK fertilizer or with no, I don't add anything. But when, if, you, you, if your soil is clay or contains less sand, not so much sand, you may start to see big differences Particularly, you may find that your fermentation after three days is just as good as NPK. Eh? So again, number of leaves, uh, you want a lot of leaves eh? and you want high chlorophyll, uh, high nitrogen, not, well, not too much nitrogen, but this indicates the growth. Eh? So the, with just in terms of number of leaves, there's no difference between uh, fresh three days fermentation with NPK. But again, all better than control. Eh? Same thing with chlorophyll content. The plant height, same, more or less the same story, uh, regardless of your soil. Uh, uh, the fresh three days is just as good as the NPK. But plant height is not an important property. Eh? We don't really go for the tallest plant in the market. <laughs> we look for the 
biggest leaf and the heaviest plant, not so much on tall plants. Okay, now the re why why do they why why is the wash rice water ben beneficial? Mainly because of uh, uh, of high P and high K. There was no clear trend for the other nutrients, but what we found that uh, plants with receiving NPK and uh, wash rice water third day, they have higher P and higher K. This is why uh, the plant respond grew much better in NPK and RW3, particularly in the third planting cycle because they took up more P and more K. And uh, just to summarize all the results, let me just read eh, about 0.4 to 35% of nutrients are lost when we wash rice. The average is 9%. And washing intensity has little to no effect on the nutrient content in wash rice water. So how much you wash, whether you wash it aggressively or not, it will not affect the nutrient content by much. Eh? What is more important is how much water you use to wash the rice and whether you ferment. And again, the best fermentation is three days. And the more water you use, basically you will see large increases in almost all the nutrients, except for P, magnesium, and zinc. And if you ferment for longer, like the wash water, you will get almost higher uh, elements of, for all nutrients. Of course, because of acid formation, you will get lower pH. And C and N, they will rise at the third, until the third day and then decline. Copper will decline all the time because of bacterial use. <clears throat> Oops. Wait. Oh. And the bacterial population is maximum at three days. After that, they will decline. So wash rice water can only support of three days of bacterial growth. You will get the highest population if you wash intensively more intensively or more aggressively and if you yes, use less water. So you wash more aggressively and you use less water, you get higher population. Again, this contradicts the, uh, the other one. Eh? Uh, you use less water, you are going to get less nutrients. So there is a trade-off. Uh, if you use less water, you will get higher bacterial growth, but you will get less nutrients. Right? So that is a, a bit of trade-off there. Eh? Uh, Bacterial diversity is the greatest when at three days. Not just you get, you don't just get a lot of bacteria, population growth, but you get more diversity. And these are the identified bacteria. And they all can uh, supply nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, as well as uh, the auxin. And uh, salts, keep in mind, salts with high content, high sand content, they lose a lot of nutrients particularly the essential nutrients of phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. So for soils with high sand content, it's very important. You, do, you manage your soil, like adding mulch or organic matter to conserve the water and to reduce the drainage loss of water, the drainage losses of nutrients. And uh, you will get stronger effect on plant growth over the long term. And we found that the fermentation three days is just as good as NPK fertilizer and in some cases there's no difference between uh, fresh or three days fermentation with NPK but all of course better than control right? but soils, if your soil has high sand content you may see less than impressive results uh, compared with your neighbor who has uh, uh, less or lower sand content and plant growth increased because they took up more P and K eh? so the conclusion is uh, use three days fresh water, uh, wash rice water, it can be as good as NPK fertilizer. Over a much longer term, maybe over several months or to a year, you be, perhaps we may find that wash rice water may actually be better than NPK. Why? Because they can build up uh, bacterial growth in the soil, beneficial bacterial growth, and they can supply, they can help to fix N, so uh, help to supply P, K, and as well as IAA, which is something that the normal fertilizer cannot do. But please bear in mind, wash rice water is almost all liquid. Because it is liquid, it, it can, we can easily cause high leaching and drainage and loss of nutrients, particularly if our soil has a lot of sand. Right? So if you pour a lot of wash rice water, don't expect it to stay in the soil, especially if it has a lot of sand. 
you may you you may lose a lot of nutrients by that way. So wash rice water has to be. But please take note, nah. Uh, wash rice water has to be applied continuously every day, daily, or perhaps once every few days. But NPK, on the other hand, is only applied once before planting. So this is probably one benefit of NPK. It, we may say that NP, uh, wash rice water is just as good as NPK. But the benefit of NPK, if you want benefit over, is you only do it once. You you apply the fertilizer once, and that's it. Whereas wash rice water, you have to always add it, and that's one drawback. Eh? So thank you, thank you very much for your. I apologize again for the delay eh, due to the hiccup. Uh, before I I receive questions, if there's time, I like to promote this book. Uh, it's on sale now by UPM Press. It's uh, there's a twenty percent discount now, twenty five ringgit twenty cents. This is a book aimed for gardening enthusiasts that uh, that that answers uh, frequency fr I, the FAQ, the questions that I'm commonly hear. Or I listen, or I get, or I read from the from other posts. Eh? So these are questions such as how much water to apply, what is the difference between organic and inorganic or mineral fertilizer, and so on. And, uh, and even this wash rice water topic is added. So you can buy it at the UPM Press. Uh, take down this this uh, address. Eh? So okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, can I... okay. Thank you very much, Luther, for your informative. Uh, sharing just now. So now we have a question from uh, Mariam. Okay, should wash rice water be fermented in a container and covered? Uh, yes, like just like that uh, Indonesian, the first one of the first few slides. But you need you need the you, you cannot just completely seal it because the the gases that is produced has to go somewhere. So that's why they attach it to a. Uh, they if you see yeah, if you remember, there's a, a jerry a jerry plastic bottle. Then there's a tube from the top to the they connect it to a water they submerge the end of the tube to water that is to allow the gas to escape they seal it because they don't want air to go in they want air to come out so uh, you need to make some holes huh? but it's okay if we in our experiment we didn't do those things we just let it out in the open <laughs> in the open air in the room of course we covered it to, to avoid evaporation but it's not to say air tight right eh? so yeah if you can cover it good but please allow air to go out Okay, thank you, Maria, for your question. Uh, next question, Doctor, from Kwan Chow. Uh, what other common household discards have been studied for the effects on the soil microbiome? But microbiome, uh, spot milk, moldy bread, yeast flour, beer, beer pickles made from kimchi and tempeh. Well, uh, at the mo I, I have read uh, the add wash rice water with, oh, common household, you mean not added with wash rice water? Uh, again, all these things are probably studied, but not at a very detailed level. Uh, but for wash rice water, they, they, some experiments, they add milk. Yes, they add milk uh, and other things as well. Uh, but again, all this is part of uh, reusing wastewater, even your uh, laundry wash, the water that comes out after laundry, like Dr. Susi. Yeah, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah correct. Right. But mm -hmm. if I could comment on this, I yeah. think there will be uh, possibilities for you know, all the gardeners to utilize it. But uh, for us in UPM, I think currently we are working with rice, uh, wash rice water. And also yeah. for me, we are using for washing machine disposal water. Yeah, so, so that water that comes from the yeah, washing machine, yeah, you just correct. go down the thing. So can you yeah. use it? Uh, one issue of that is the soap. Soap contains salt, and it's not yeah. so. Uh, so basically, there will be uh, some benefits on utilizing all these ways. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kwan, for your uh, good uh, question. So, yeah, from Carol. Any study on fermented water with cooked rice? Uh, oh, you mean you cook the rice and then you ferment it? I, at the moment, I think no, not. Again, wash rice water, eh? as I said this in earlier, there are only 41 papers worldwide. <laughs> not 41 papers in Indonesia or Malaysia. So there's mm -hmm. very little study uh, or, or great variety. So it is yes a possibility you you cook the rice and then you ferment it. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it better than using uncooked rice? The, the yeah, but the one we did was uncooked rice. Yes. Uh, there there have been evidence that there have evidence data from wash rice water that was applied to plant. 
like vegetables where they have effect on their growth like biomass leaf area and height yes i just presented <laughs> yeah, there, there is evidence uh, that shows that like for my my experiment choice sum the leaves are bigger and heavier and the total weight is higher but it depends on the soil soil with sand high sand content you may not see a very impressive result even if you get better it's not to say as good as others or you may not get any result at all right so there is evidence eh? okay uh molds growing on the plants ah they, this is again just because you see mold doesn't mean uh it's bad all right if you see most, it's probably because uh, the area, maybe because it's too shady uh, or too wet. So maybe you have applied too much uh, water or like wash rice water in the area. So you need to, I don't know about your area, you need to open up the area, maybe reduce the density. Like if you use in the pot, you may have to put in the pot in a warmer place uh, and set, put uh, further the distance between pots so that it's not so cramped. But if it's in the field, if you add, uh, if you have mulch, like if you add something on top, you may have to remove those mulch to reduce the wetness so you don't get more. But again, just because you see more doesn't mean, oh, this is bad. <laughs> okay, uh, it, it can be beneficial. But it's an indication that the area is a bit dark and uh, a bit too wet. Maybe you have applied too much. So try to reduce your application of wash rice water or and watering. Thank you. Uh, what if we soak rice grain in water? Will, will the effect be the same? Uh, what do you mean by this? You mean, is we here? If, uh, we, if soak we soak water, just now you are talking with washing. Now they, they want to soak the, the, the rice. Is there any effect on that? Uh, okay, that's one, yeah. one area to study. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's but, one area. Yeah, yeah but currently the result is related to the washing. Yes, just yeah. immediate washing and reuse. But yes, I, I intuitively we think that if you soak it, you leave more time for the rice, the grains, I mean the nutrients to be leached out. So we expect more nutrients. But again, uh, I, I want to stress, uh, like one reviewer asked, uh, wash rice water here is not to compete with food. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not uh, eat rice either for rice or use for wash rice, wash rice water. It's just that when we wash the rice, what do we do with the water? That's all. It's not to wash it in such a way that we get maximum nutrients until the rice we eat contains zero. Nothing. It's just eating solid mess only. So it's not that is not. Of course, we don't want a case where the nutrition goes down and then we get very, uh, very, very rich uh, wash rice water because all the nutrients lost. And we don't want that case. It's not to compete with food. It's just a way whether we can, is it worth the time? to you reuse the wash rice water yes okay uh for that three cycle do you use the same media yes you use that's the idea you use the same media we don't change uh, or do you replace no we don't replace we use the same media because we wanted to see uh over the long term using the same media does it have an effect or not we don't replace we don't do anything okay uh, the neutral effect by temperature, uh, this is one area we need to study. Uh, we did it in the room temperature. We fermented in, under the room temperature of about maybe uh, 25, 26, 28 degrees Celsius. Eh? Uh, about that. Not, 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 out in the, not out in the sun, eh? but we did it in a room temperature. Okay, but yes, it's interesting to see, will it have an effect? Or if you leave it in the fridge, eh? does it have an effect? <laughs> I think it will because it affects the bacteria growth. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any difference in the amount of nutrients with the type of rice that you are going to use? Uh, yes. Um, the amount of nutrients depends on the, the rice variety, how the rice is being prepared and milled, and uh, whether it's white rice, brown rice, or red rice. Because brown rice, we don't remove the, uh, the outer layer. White rice, you remove the outer layer. But remember that brown rice, the outer layer is a bit like a waterproof seal. So when we wash the wash, uh, when we wash the brown rice, even though the brown rice contains more nutrients than the white rice, we may find that the brown rice water contains less nutrients because that the, the outer layer protects the rice grain, the nutrients from being lost. So you, you may get lower nutrient content. In fact, in an earlier study, I found 
uh, brown wash rice water that is wash rice wash rice water from brown rice containing less nutrients than the white rice water again i just it's not to compete with food eh? it's not please don't get in mind that you know this study is to maximize the nutrient yes. extraction <laughs> from rice yes. grain yeah, yeah very true yeah because we don't want that eh? we don't want to eat yeah. nothing eh? But our plants are surviving, but we die because yeah. we eat nothing. <laughs> right. Basically, basically, we want to utilize all the waste that is uh, available in our surroundings. Yeah. So then we can share with uh, the data with our uh, audience. Okay. Okay. Any other question from Facebook? Uh, we have a variety of rice, brown rice, Thai rice. Which one? Okay. Or well, this one, as I said, I. It's a study by itself, just to study all the various rices, various breads, because it depends on the rice variety. That's why, uh, if the rice variety has lots of nutrients, obviously more will come up. But uh, who knows? And brown rice as well, and the Thai rice, short rice, long grain rice, medium. We use medium grain. That is a study by itself. But uh, what we have done so far is brown rice with white rice. I didn't present the result. If you wash brown rice, you will get lower nutrients because of the protection the outer layer, the brown rice gives to the, uh, the grain itself. So you will get lower nutrients using brown rice. But we eat more nutrients. Uh, so <laughs> it's still win-win in a way. <laughs> All right. Uh, next. I put, oh, this. I put carrot skin, potato skin on top of salt. Wash rice water. Water to wash the veggie. But the plant grows most. Use, uh, okay, this this basically answers the, your previous question. Eh? Uh, you have to probably look at your environment, aerate the place, make sure more oxygen, more air flows through the environment, or put it. You put your plants in a slightly warmer place eh, uh, to reduce the growth of mold. Right. But I think for for this question also, it is related to the use of a. Uh, you put your carrot skin and potato skin directly to the soil. There mm. will be uh, if you put at the top. There will be a uh, retention of moisture will be in the in the top of your soil. That's why um, the mold is coming up. If you want to put the carrot skin and also potato skin, you must cover with the soil. Then it will be better. Yeah. yeah. Then, okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next. Any more? So, any other question? Oui. Lock question or three in one. Yes, yes, just wash away, yeah. You can wash away. Or oh, cut off the layer, yes. But uh, please bear, bear in mind, mold doesn't mean bad. Eh? It's not to say more something wrong with your plants. Eh? It's, it's, we cannot say it's good. We cannot say it's bad. It's just indication that the area is uh, is uh, quite moist. The humidity is high in the, in the environment. Eh? It could be indication of that. All right. Okay, is that all? Is that all? I think that's all. Eh? Anyone wants to ask verbally? Nothing. So, okay. Uh, thank you so much for... Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Eh? I, I would like to thank the Faculty of Agriculture for hosting this, giving a channel, and I apologize for the... I don't know sure what happened just now. There was an internet connection. Eh? I was talking for so long. Eh? <laughs> Still talking. <laughs> Nobody talking to myself. Okay, right. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we would like to thank uh, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Christopher for giving a very informative uh, webinar today. So if, uh, you know, you have any suggestion for us to go through, you know, the special topic that you, you want for us to cover, you can put in the comment later on. So we appreciate your participation for this webinar today. So enjoy your weekend. So see you for another webinar. Inshallah, we will organize more yeah, to please comment for this okay. webinar okay and give uh, your uh, support to the you know we are sharing more lah, if you give a suggestion to us so thank okay. you all enjoy your weekend okay bye-bye thank you bye